After that performance against Aston Villa, following on from the game against Wolves, following on from the games against Newcastle and Norwich, I think it's about time that we properly take a look at Manchester United's squad. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to assess every single player and whether or not Ralph Ragnick and us fans can trust them. And what I mean by that is this squad is far better than how it's playing at the moment. Ralph Ranick is a new manager that's coming. The manager's not the issue now. Solskjaer's been sacked. The players are still there. The system, in my opinion, is not the issue. The players are the issue. And we need to find out by doing this video, as I said, this is going to be purely my opinion. You might disagree with it, and that's what the comment section is all about. And I'll be really interested to hear whether or not you agree with me on these. But I'm going to take a look at every player and give my opinion as to whether or not Ralph Rannick can trust them to do the job that he needs them to do. And let's let's start in goal. Let's start with David De Gea. And it's quite simple, of course. David De Gea has proven so far in his tenure that he can be trusted under Ralph Rannick. Uh, and, and bear in mind that David De Gea, at the, end of the tail end of last season, Dean Henderson came in. Dean Henderson turned into the number one goalkeeper. You could be forgiven for thinking that David Hay I did. I thought it was the perfect time for him to leave, for him to move on. But no, he doubled down on it. He, he doubled down on his commitment to United and his performances have absolutely proven that. Of course he can trust him. And I see absolutely no... I, I, when it comes to making assumptions, I'm trying not to make any in this video. So I see no reason at all why he can't trust Tom Heaton and why he can't trust Lee Grant. Even though I don't know what Lee Grant is or what Lee Grant does. Now, you might disagree with my opinion on this one, but we've heard now from Ralph Rangnick, he's confirmed that Dean Henderson wants to leave on loan and that Ragnick would rather him stay. And therefore, in my opinion, I don't particularly think that he could, he could, he could trust Dean Henderson because it's all about this unity inside this squad. Ralph Ragnick's job now... It, Success for Manchester United this season is not winning the Premier League. He came in halfway through the season. He was never going to win the league. His success for him, it's not just about results. It's about the performances and continued progress, step by step by step by step, getting United towards the position where when Ten Hag comes in in the summer or Pochettino or whoever comes in, they can take a squad on that's capable and mentally ready to then go and challenge for the Premier League, which we all thought we could have done at the start of the season based on the squad quality. But not on the squad mentality, that's for sure. And I, I therefore don't think, when, when it comes to, um, I don't know, when it comes to him implementing his system and his style and everything he's trying to do, I'm not sure whether he now can trust Dean Henderson. If Dean Henderson's head is like, I want to go out on loan, but you won't let me. It's going to make it tough for him. That's what I think anyway. So I think, you know, there's no reason to think that Lee Grant and Tom Heaton can't be trusted. And maybe I'm being unfair on Dean Henderson there, but that's my opinion there. And the problem here is that You'll see there's plenty of players here that I'm going to give a red box to. And judging by... And a lot of what I'm going to be doing here, by the way, is going to be judged mostly on what I see on the pitch. I'm not making assumptions based on what I'm reading in the press or what yeah, what, what the stories are coming out about dressing room discontent, X, Y, Z. I'm, I'm mainly judging this on what I am seeing on the pitch. And who do, who do I think, therefore, that us fans can trust to give 100% to the game? That Rangnick can trust to implement his system and do it properly. And there's so many players that I don't think he can trust. And I think Victor Lindelof is probably one of them. Victor Lindelof, uh, was pretty shocking last night there uh, against Aston Villa. And I think he's been very shaky under Rangnick so far. I think all of them have, apart from Phil Jones, really, and Eric Bai. But I, I'm, I'm unsure whether he can trust Victor Lindelof to do the job that he requires. I think Eric Bai, uh, Eric Bai, as I said, he's only played, what, once? Twice under him? He played there alongside that man there. And it's very strange here that I'm giving two green boxes to Eric Bai and Phil Jones. And I'm giving two red boxes to Victor Lindelof and our club captain, Harry Maguire. I just don't think, when it, when it comes to, when I say trust, I mean, as I say, players that, Radnick can have full belief that if he puts them in the starting 11, that they are going to do what he has asked them to do, that they are going to give all the commitment that they showed in the training ground that week. And I don't think, judged on what I've seen so far under Ragnick from Lindelof by Jones and Maguire, that he can trust either Lindelof or Maguire. And I think he can trust 
by and Jones and Maguire. This is a whole different conversation, a whole different video. The guy's the captain. Captains get held to different standards. Captains get scrutiny that's on a higher level than any other player. That's the responsibility of having the armband at Manchester United or any other football club, right? So you can't be too surprised that I, I think that about Harry Maguire. And he was talking about, in the build-up to this game, of course, he didn't play, so I'm not, I'm not putting it, this at his feet. But he said, in the build-up to this Villa game, you're going to see fight. You're going to see X, Y, Z. What do we see? Absolutely fucking nothing against Villa. We just saw a, a culmination of the same problems. Now, as club captain, he has a bigger responsibility to rid the club of these problems. Unfortunately, he's part of it. In terms of player trust down here, absolutely. I think Rafael Varane, probably one of his best performances in a United shirt uh, in, against Villa. I, I just, in, in terms of how composed he looked, there was a particular moment where he was on, the, on, the, on our byline, a lovely little back heel to stop it going out for a corner. Varane just looked good. Looked right decisions at the right time. Very experienced. And I think he's a man who Randick will lean on quite a lot. Diogo Delo has he's come through. He's really, really showing that I think he can be trusted in that right back position. I think he's been pretty impressive. He's forced wan out of the team. And wan and Luke Shaw, because of Tellez and because of Delo, so I suppose let's, let's highlight Tellez in, in the same vein. I think Tellez has shown that he's a player who can be trusted. I think he's... And when I... Uh, the main basis of me saying trust is players, the players that are going to put in a, a committed performance. Now, pretty much all of them have got black marks on their name from the game so far under Rannick because there's not really been a pure performance, has there? First 30 minutes against Crystal Palace, and we're scraping the barrel here. But that's as good as it's got. Ever since then, we had one all against Young Boys, 11 changes. Then you had Norwich. Hmm, we know what happened there. Newcastle after that, we could have lost both of those games. Wolves, we did lose that game. Last night against Villa, we could have lost that game as well. There's not been any control. But I would trust Delo and I would trust Tellez probably more than I would trust wan and I would trust Luke Shaw at the moment. Now, Luke Shaw was okay last night against Aston Villa, but again, Luke Shaw, it's past him, but he's been... I think Burnley was a game where he was fantastic, but then there's been other games where they've just passed him by. So again, I'm going to put both of those down as players that right now I don't think that Ragnik can completely trust. And it, this is not me saying that I think Delo and Tellez are better fullbacks than Shaw or wan but a lot of you would probably argue that going forward, certainly wan and Delo. I don't think so. I think Luke Shaw was one of our players of the year last year. He was one of the players of the tournament at Euro 2020. What I'm seeing under Ragnik, I'm not seeing that. And that's what I mean. The chips are down now. The backs are against the wall. Who can we trust to put in the performances? That's what we've got to look at as fans. And that's what I'm doing in this video. Obviously, Brandon Williams, Tuan Zebe, and Ted Menge all out on loan. So there's no point talking about those. And I know a lot of you, as I said, I'm making a lot of my judgment here on what I'm seeing on the pitch. So there's absolutely no reason why I would give Paul Pogba a... Re there's no reason to say that Paul Pogba can't be trusted. Paul Pogba hasn't really been... He hasn't played. I question whether he can, simply because he's, I think his head's more than 50% out the door. I think he's just thinking about life after Manchester United. But it is what it is. I suppose Juan Mata and Jesse Lingard are confusing ones. In my opinion, I don't think that Jesse Lingard, that Ragnick can, can sort of trust and expect him to put in those sorts of performances because, you know, Lingard's rejected the contract. Lingard doesn't want to play for Manchester. Maybe he does want to play for Manchester United, but he doesn't want to play on the terms that we've offered him. So therefore, his head's half out the door. Therefore, I don't think that Ragnick can trust him to implement what he wants and the intensity that he wants it between now and the end of the season. Wan Mata, um, there's been stories about... I'd probably put Wan Mata down as a player that he could trust. I might. I, you might disagree with that one there, but I, I'm going to put him down as a player he can trust. But, but Wan Mata, I'm a bit... I probably say I'm a bit indecisive. No, it's just like, I, I don't really know. I'm kind of sitting on the fence of why it matters. You let me know about that one. Scrolling down here, uh, Andreas Pereira, obviously not at the club. Uh, you've got Ahmad, who's probably going out on loan, wants to go out on loan. It's not that he... I, th I, think, he could, I think he could be trusted, but the fact of the matter is, is Ahmad probably won't be here at the end of January, so it's a bit of a mute conversation. When it comes to Fred, 
You might not like him, ladies and gents. You might think the Manchester United need better midfielders to win the Premier League. And you're absolutely right. We need better midfielders to win the Premier League. When it comes to player trust, I think he can trust Fred. <clears throat> I think we can trust Fred to put in a, co a, co a committed performance. So I'm not talking here about quality. This isn't an assessment of the quality of each player. Unfortunately, we've got to go back to the basics. I've got to go back and be like a year nine teacher, picking the players that I think are going to do the best at the weekend simply on trust not on quality on people i think they're actually going to turn up show up and deliver a performance because we've got we've got to that stage now where we have to go back to the basics now bruno fernandez is somebody i think is going to cause a bit of a a mixed bag here i'm going to put bruno down as a player he can trust but i think a lot of you are going to say sam you're an idiot for doing that you're just being a hypocrite i think he can trust bruno to put in an a full tilt performance, 100% effort the whole time. What he can't trust Bruno to do is hold a position. I think his positional discipline is a bit poor. I think he's a bit of a chaotic player. He needs to control that. As I, I said in my live stream this morning, Bruno Fernandes, his greatest strength can be his greatest, greatest weakness. His, his, his energy, his dynamism, his ability to constantly be moving can be a great strength. But if he, if he, get over, if he gets over enthusiastic, it becomes a weakness. But I think between now and the end of the season, Bruno's going to play a far more central role than most. No, no actually, no. We all, we all think so. Bruno's great, man. Bruno's absolutely great. Uh, in terms of Nemanja Matic, I think he can trust him to do a job. I absolutely do think he can trust him to do a job. Can he do a job? Um, can he play more than once a week? I think the Matic situation is a bit weird, right? Because Matic is somebody who... I don't know how old he is. He's old as fuck. But we need that defensive midfielder for that for that um, control in the middle, Matic is kind of key, right? But he hasn't played that much. That simply must be down to fitness. Now, this is obviously going to be one that, well, there's going to be plenty of talking points here, but Donny van der Beek, in my opinion, judging from the lack of minutes that he's getting, I would say Ragnik feels like he doesn't trust Donny van der Beek to do the job. Donny van der Beek came on last night and we had a bit more of a measure of control all of a sudden because we had three midfielders on against Aston Villa. But something must be going on behind the scenes in training that tells Ragnik that he doesn't trust Donny van der Beek in the same way that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer felt that he couldn't trust Donny van der Beek. Now, I don't know whether that's the right or the wrong thing to be saying here. And that one's more of an assumption than anything. So I think that's a little bit unfair on Donny. I'm probably going to give him a bit of half and half because I honestly... I just don't know. I just don't know whether he can be trusted or not. Uh, Solskjaer clearly didn't know. Uh, I don't think Ragnik knows. I don't think anybody knows. But something must be going on, eh, for him to not be playing. In terms of players he can trust, well, James Garner's got out and not in Forest, and Hannibal hasn't been played, but Scott McTominay is probably going to be one of the first players on your list of people that he can trust. Do you not think? I think so anyway. Uh, and I know a lot of people think that Scott McTominay is not good enough to play for Manchester United week in, week out. He's not, in terms of our midfield, is not of the quality that's going to win us the Premier League. Not with Fred and McTominay starting every single week. But in terms of what we need now, <clears throat> I wish I wasn't having these conversations, man. We should not be having these conversations. But we are. Because we've got to go back to the goddamn basics of trust. Of who do you think is going to turn out and turn up and turn out and turn up. It's like Sunday league conversations. But here we are. And it's because of the continuation of the games from game to game to game. From Norwich to Newcastle to Wolves to Villa. Similar, 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 similar. Different formations, different players. Same problems. It's something bigger than just the players. If we go down as a Hannibal, uh, yeah, of course you could definitely trust Hannibal. There's no reason to say that he could not trust Hannibal to do a fantastic job if he was given the opportunity. Uh, and he obviously did very, very well out with Tunisia at the Arab Cup. Got to the final, I believe. Now, go down to the strikers. Cristiano Ronaldo. You're damn right you can trust Cristiano Ronaldo, man. In terms of the performances, of course, th there's going to be criticism. But Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. You can trust him to put himself in the right positions at the right time. Can you trust your attackers to get the ball to him? That's a bit different. Ronaldo is not going to be the man who drops deep, the man who cut, but he does do that sometimes because he gets frustrated with how Manchester United are playing. In my opinion, I think he can 
trust Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, you might disagree on that one. You can let me know in the comments. And if you do disagree, please let me know why. Don't just shout, Sam, you're an idiot in the comments. Or you can do that if you want. Anthony Martial, no way you can trust him. Anthony Martial wants out of the club. Martial wants to leave. Why would he possibly be able to trust him to come in and put a fully committed performance in? I don't think he can. Now, Marcus Rashford. I'd say this is probably the biggest debate of the video. Because everything, everything is telling me that he can absolutely trust Marcus Rashford. Because Rashford genuinely loves the club. Rashford is committed to the club. But in terms of it, where he is right now, I don't know how he got there or what's actually wrong. I don't think he can trust Marcus Rashford. Not with his performances. The game against Villa was the perfect example because in the build-up to the game, Rashford was like, oh, um, you know, he gave, his, uh, he gave a message out on social media saying, I'm really disappointed to hear all these stories about uh, discontent in the dressing room that we all don't want to play for the club. He's like, we're all committed. We're all 100% committed, X, Y, and Z. And then the performance against Villa followed. So it showed me there's a disconnect between the message that he's portraying and the message that he's able to deliver. Now, I don't know what that is. And this isn't a scapegoat of Marcus Rashford, but I think right now, I don't think Ragnick can trust him with his performances. Now, Mason Greenwood is a bit different, but Mason Greenwood, I would say, is... I, I personally think he can trust Mason Greenwood. You might be frustrated with uh, Mason Greenwood's decision-making, for example. You might be frustrated with how Mason Greenwood's playing or the fact that he's not looking up and seeing his teammates. And that's a bit different. I think he can trust him to put in a performance. Whether he gets the end result or not, as I said, is different. Now, of course, we all know it's an easy green box for Edison Cavani. In terms of attitude, in terms of approach, in terms of what Manchester United attackers need to be, Cavani is a perfect example. The tempo he sets, the attitude he has, the commitment he has. So what we if, if we had every if every player had the sort of mentality that Cavani had, I'm not sure we'd be in this problem, in this situation. But here we are. Now Jaden Sancho, there's another one which is confusing. I would probably sit on the I would probably sit on the edge of that one. I would say that's a 50-50. I'm not sure whether he can no, actually, no, sod that. He can trust him. I think he can trust Jaden Sancho. Jaden Sancho has not been delivering here so far, I don't think, overall. I think he would admit that as well. Now, I don't think it's a scapegoat or a witch hunt to suggest that. It's just what we're seeing in front of us. But I think, I think he could trust Sancho a bit more than Rashford at the moment. But it's tit for tat. It's two players who are underperforming, and let's be completely honest. Someone he absolutely can trust. We saw it against Villa last night. We've seen it in pretty much every performance so far. Right from the preseason, the whole way through, Anthony Elanga has done nothing but impress. Well done to him. Continuing to take advantage of the opportunities that he's being given. And I think he should be given more. I absolutely think he should be given more. I'd like to, I'd love to see him start at the weekend. Because as I said, this is, this is about trust. This is about Rangnick trying to implement a system. And if Rashford's not doing it on form and he can't be trusted at the moment, if Sancho's... Mm, I'm in an R in. Fuck it. Put Anthony Langer in to start against Aston Villa. Why not? You have to put in the players you can trust. Now, of course, to Heath Chong and Shola Shuratire, they're not in this conversation. But this is the full list I've gone through. Let's run from the top, eh? I think that Radnick can trust David De Gea, Lee Grant, and Tom Heaton. I question whether he can trust Dean Henderson simply for the fact that Dean came to Radnick and said, look, I'd like to leave now on loan. And he said no. Therefore, I don't... I don't think you can completely trust that player anymore because the player's come to... I think Ragnick's wrong to keep him. I think we've got Tom Heaton and Lee Grant there. We've got three goalkeepers. Let Dean go out on loan. He's at a point in his career where he needs to play. Don't keep him if he doesn't want to be here. Same with any other player. In terms of our defenders, I've been pretty harsh with a few of them here. I'm not going to lie. I don't think he can trust Lindelof and Maguire. I don't think we can. This is just as much as who I think I can trust as a fan going into a game... Who do I trust to actually put in a performance? Right now, I don't trust Lindelof or Maguire. And I would trust Bai and Jones. Whether that would be good enough to win Premier League games, I'm not sure, but they would at least put in a performance. Same goes for Varane and Delo. Luke Shaw, I question. Luke Shaw and Wamosaka, I question both of them. Tellez, I've seen far more from Delo and Tellez. 
under Radnick than I have from Shaw and Wan Bissaka. Of course, Shaw had a like a barnstorming game against Burnley. But Shaw's been very, very in and out all season long. And I think even he would definitely admit that. Same with Wan Bissaka. Going down to midfielders, I see no I, I haven't seen Paul Popper underneath Ralph Radnick yet. So I, I there's no reason to suggest that he couldn't trust him if he played him. Wan Mata, he's only played a couple of times. I'm saying he can trust him, but he's just not good enough, I suppose. I think that's a fair thing to say. I don't personally think he can trust Jesse Lingard. I think his head's out the door. If he doesn't want to sign a contract, doesn't want to stay in Manchester United, it's simple. Just don't play him. Ahmed, I think he could trust, but he's going out on loan, so it's kind of a mute conversation there. As I said earlier, I think he can absolutely trust Fred. There's a conversation to be had about Bruno Fernandes, which we already had. The king of chaos, when he controls that chaos, like Yennefer <laughs> in The Witcher said that earlier. Nice reference, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> just complimenting myself what an absolute what anyway back to the video Bruno Fernandes I think he can trust but he has to control that chaos Nemanja Matic I think he can trust I just don't think he's fit enough for, to play as regularly as he is I don't know but in terms of the element of control he's your man Donny van der Beek I swear to god I, I still can't make my mind up something must be going wrong in training for him to not get the game time and it's happened under two managers so I'm just putting it at 50-50. I'm saying that Scott McTominay you can absolutely trust. And Hannibal, there's no reason to say that Hannibal can't be trusted. If you're looking at our forwards, I'm putting Martial and Rashford down right now as the players I don't think that Randy can completely trust. I think Ronaldo, Greenwood, Cavani, Sancho is a, a question mark. You could probably put Sancho in the same category as Martial and, and Rashford at the moment. But Alanga, you can absolutely trust. What you can see there, as you can see, red. there's, a, there's plenty of red throughout that squad. From front to back, from goalkeepers... All the way up to strikers. There's problems inside this Manchester United squad. So I want you to let me know in the comments below. What do you think about this, this video? What do you think about this? what I've been discussing here? It's not just about talking about players' quality and who's the best player. We've got, to, we've got to take it back. Put it back in first gear. We're stuck in neutral at the moment as a club and we need to get in first gear. And the only way you're going to do that is by playing players that you trust to put in an actual performance. Whether or not that performance is good enough, it's a different question altogether. But right now, we can't string basic passes together. Right now, we can't put in a full 90-minute performance where you think, you know what, that's a Manchester United team. Therefore, I think Ralph's got to go back to the basics and go back to who he truly believes that he can trust so far. You let me know what you think about my list in the comments below. I'd like you to let me know about yours in the comments. Which players do you think he can't trust? And as always, if you're new to United People's TV and you're still here, please consider subscribing. Until next time, though, hopefully after a win against Villa, take it easy.